So this huge scope, stocks, bonds, real estate, commodities, 200 years. Why is looking back that far so critical? Why not just stick with, say, the last 70 years where the data might be cleaner? Well, because so much of what we sort of take for granted, especially thinking about U.S. markets, comes from data starting around 1900 or maybe 1926. Right. The standard data sets we often see referenced. Exactly. And that essentially gives you the story of the 20th century. But the paper really hammers home the point that the 20th century might have been, well, a bit weird, historically speaking, anomalous. Anomalous how? In terms of returns, particularly the relationship between stocks and bonds, if you ignore the 19th century or data from other parts of the world, you might get a skewed view of what's truly normal over the very long run. It's like judging a whole climate based on one unusually warm decade or something. That's a great way to put it. But, and this is a big but, diving into that really old data comes with its own set of, let's say, issues. Ah, the challenges. I was waiting for this. Yeah. I mean, 19th century financial data, it's not like downloading clean numbers from Bloomberg. You've got quirks, gaps, inconsistencies, just figuring out what constitutes a stock market return or a bond yield consistently across centuries and countries. It's tough. So we need this long view for content. We also have to be super careful about the data quality itself. Precisely. The authors are very clear about this. How you handle these data problems, which periods you include, it can actually change the results you see. So the idea that the past perfectly predicts the future gets even fuzzier when the past itself is kind of hard to read clearly. Right. It definitely complicates that simple extrapolation. But even with all those caveats, having this 200-year anchor is, I think, incredibly valuable. How's that? It helps us frame things. It gives us a baseline, however imperfect, to compare against. It helps distinguish between what might be a long-term trend versus, say, a multi-decade blip. It forces us to build more thoughtful assumptions than just rolling forward recent performance. Okay, got it. So it's about calibrating our view with the longest lens possible, warts and all. Exactly. 